So the iPhone 14 Pro was just announced, and with it comes videos about the death of real cameras. Even I do not exist above tradition. So I'm exaggerating quite a bit when I say the death of real cameras. I do think there is always going to be places for cameras, or at least in the foreseeable future, there's going to be cameras that make sense for high-end photographers, for sports and action wildlife photographers, also cinema cameras for the movie industry. But I do wonder if we're coming to a point where some of the prosumer level cameras are going to be being taken over by the cell phone industry. I guess let's say taken over more so than they already have. Now I know that Canon is starting to think that the bottom is here and we're seeing the bottom out of the camera industry about how many units that will actually be sold a year. But I do wonder with this recent iPhone announcement along with some words from a Sony executive, if maybe the bottom is quite a bit lower than Canon would like to believe or even that I would like to believe. So quickly I'm going to go over what this Sony executive said and then give a few of the specs of the iPhone 14 Pro camera that does make it pretty impressive. So first off the Sony executive said and I'm kind of paraphrasing here but essentially the sentiment was that cell phones or smartphone cameras we're going to match interchangeable lens cameras within three years. And at first that sounds absolutely nuts. It seems like they're really far off from actually reaching the capability of say a full frame mirrorless camera. I'm actually on the Sony a7S III right now and it's very dark out here, way too dark to really even be doing a video, but I'm sure that it's holding up fairly well. And if I had my cell phone out here doing a video with my cell phone, then it would absolutely be breaking down like crazy. So the thought process that maybe a cell phone camera will be able to compete with say the A7S III like I'm holding here is definitely fairly far-fetched. And also you gotta be considering that cameras are also gonna be improving in the future as well. But what does give me a little bit of pause is just to think about the competitive nature and the amount of money that is going into the cell phone market. Essentially, everybody has iPhones or Samsungs or things like that, and it is such a big amount of money that is flowing in and out of this cell phone industry and this cell phone market. And in a lot of ways, these things are hyped, especially on the high end, about the cameras. And that means the innovations that are going through these things and the amount of money and resources that are getting pumped into them is gonna be tremendously more than any amount of money that is gonna be pumped in to a dedicated camera industry at this point. And that's just the facts of capitalism in general. Now, does that mean that physics aren't gonna play a role here and that an actual glass bringing in light to a bigger sensor isn't going to be superior well to a large degree i would say yes it's always going to be somewhat superior but there was also going to be a point where people thought that digital would never be able to compete with film and well film has a certain type of look but digital has almost completely taken over so it's hard to believe that within three years that it's going to be you know like taken over completely okay maybe that buys me a little bit more time I do see a point coming possibly where the bar for people who actually need a dedicated camera is still much higher than what it is today. With the new iPhone that just got announced, the sensor is getting larger. It's twice as big as it was in the past. It is, I think they said nine millimeters by seven millimeters. I actually measured it. It is like the exact size of this finger right here, this middle finger, it's the exact size of like my, th that nail right there, right there. So if you can imagine right there, that nail is pretty much the size of the sensor that is in uh, the iPhone today. And actually is right about half the size of a micro four thirds sensor. So like, if you can imagine like two of these, then you see the size of a micro four thirds sensor. So that is quite a bit of light that is coming into a sensor at this point. And also with the different algorithms, supposedly it's gonna be twice as good in low light. So I know some of this is exaggerating and some of it is marketing, but what happens in three or four or five years from now, 
when the sensor maybe, let's say, is a one inch sensor or even more. And if you have a Sony executive saying things like this, and maybe they're not the most informed Sony executive, I don't know, but you would think that Sony who makes all the sensors for pretty much every cell phone manufacturer that's out there, I think minus Samsung, they would probably know a thing or two about what technology they're gonna be putting into these different sensors to make it even more impressive. Guess what I'm really trying to get at here is do you think like in one or two years I should start like transitioning to an iPhone camera shooter and make this like an iPhone camera channel? Or do you think it needs to be like six or seven months? I mean, what do you think? I'm completely joking on that. But I guess the point that I'm making is let's hope and push and expect more out of our cameras that we do have so that we can really justify having these cameras. I think Canon, Sony, everybody needs to step up their game and maybe start putting things like computational photography and computational videography into these type of cameras. No, God, please, no, no! And even if it's an option you can cut off and on and it sounds ridiculous, but I think you're gonna have to at least pump a little bit more tech into these cameras so that the prosumer market doesn't bottom out any further than it already has. If I had to guess where things are going over the next five years, I would say that the iPhone is pretty much gonna get rid of all the action cams. I think that with their new stable state mode, which they've added, I think the action camera side is almost completely dead. I think pretty much all action cameras will go towards the 360 side, so it will make more sense to have a 360 camera as far as an action camera goes. And then as far as the prosumer cameras go, I don't know, where's the stopping point? Is it micro four thirds? Is it APS-C or full frame? Where's that shake out in five years? I know that the Super Pro N is gonna be there, it's gonna be needed, but I do think that camera manufacturers are gonna really need to fight for everybody's dollar in order to justify a lot of other people buying a camera. I personally hope that there is a big, bright future for the camera industry and that competitiveness comes in and there's a lot of great things happening and it's a lot brighter than the sky is right now and this light is absolutely killing me in S-Log3 and it's probably getting grainy. I hope it's super bright and I hope there's a lot of amazing cameras that we can't even possibly imagine at this point on the horizon and gonna come out. But I am, I guess let's just say a little bit more nervous today than I was yesterday. So what do you think? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. Do you think the iPhone is an impressive camera? Do you think that interchangeable lens cameras are so beyond regular iPhone cameras that they can never possibly catch up? Are you kind of like me where you're seeing all the different trends and the money and the technology going into these new iPhones and you're starting to think that maybe the camera industry is gonna be getting hit harder over the next five years than maybe it did over the last 10? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. If you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And until next time, peace.